This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Media Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson, in a manner of speaking, we're going back to basics. I got a couple emails from people saying, hey Kev, you know, you got into the advanced lessons, we want to go back to the basics, so we're going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to continue our look at our settings, but we're going to talk about one of the settings inside of the settings tab of your project window that is probably going to be the most trouble. You know, you could have thought about everything, you know, when you imported, captured or transcoded your media, even so when you're editing. The problem is, is that if you get to the end and you want to export your clips so that they look the best, if your export settings aren't set up correctly, you are going to run into no end of problems. So in the next two lessons, we're going to take an in-depth look at the export setting and I'm going to talk about and show you how you can get your exports from Media Composer looking as good as possible. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an alt and tab for all my Windows friends out there. And what I've done for the purposes of this lesson is I've actually created a new user setting just simply called Edit Man. And the reason that I did that was because I wanted to get my export settings to look pretty much the way that they would look if it was the first time you'd launched Media Composer. Now, to be perfectly honest, this can look a little bit daunting having all of these export settings in here. And yes, it is daunting. And to be perfectly honest, I never use any of them. The first thing I normally do is just blow everything in there completely right away and start from scratch. Because I'll always see people, they'll have like their final timeline, they come in here, they're like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll do a quick time reference, or maybe, you know, maybe I'll just do a, a fast, fast export of a quick time, you know, NTSC. And they don't really know what they're doing and they rely heavily on these export settings. But to be honest, they're very specific settings for very specific purposes. And what we want to do is we want to create very specific settings, but in more so for a general purpose. And when I show you how we're going to go through and do these, you're going to realize quickly that as long as you think through what you want to do, you're actually going to be okay when it comes to setting up different export settings based on the frame rate that you happen to be working in and whether you're working in HD, SD, and progressive versus interlaced, okay? So let's get in, and like I said, the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove everything from here. Now, I can't remove everything, because you're gonna notice that one of these export settings has a check mark beside it. So what does that mean? Well, if I take one of these clips that I have in my bin that we're gonna be working with exporting, I'll just take my 4K clip here, and if I was to take this clip and I was just to simply right click on it and I was to say export right here, You'll notice that by default, it automatically comes to the untitled preset. Well, if I come back to my settings here, you'll see that that is the uh, untitled preset right here. If I was to switch this to be, let's just say, send a QuickTime movie here, and I was now to right click, let's actually just do it from here. If I was to right click and say export, Okay, you'll see now that send to QuickTime movie is the default export. So if you're always working in same type of project, same frame rate, same everything, you can really have this set to be the one preset that you're always going to go to and then just constantly export like that. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel. Now, what I can do here is I can delete all of the export settings except for the one that is considered the current one, which in this case is just going to be the untitled export presets. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything. It actually makes life a lot easier. And what's important to keep in mind is that we could, we could do the same thing with all of our bin views here. If we're going to get in and create brand new bin views, I would probably just blow all those bin views away and just start right from scratch. Okay, so things are a little bit different now. We have to actually come down and look for the export setting, and it's located right here, and it's simply called export. Okay. Now, in most cases, what happens when somebody goes to export something is that their show is done. Okay, and I'm just going to assume for argument's sake that this clip that I have here is their show. Okay. And what's going to happen is the first thing they're going to do is they're going to right click and they're going to come down to export or they're going to try to. And in this case, because I have the 4K clip up in the preview window here and not in the timeline, it's not going to let me do it. So I'll do it from the bin here. I'm just going to come down to export. And the first thing people do is they say, well, OK, um, I'm going to come into the options and I think I want to do a QuickTime movie. So there it is there and all this should be OK. And I'm going to say save. 
and I'm going to send this to the desktop and I'm going to say save and what's going to happen is I'm going to get this error and it's going to say well the clip 4k DCI scope has an edit rate of 24 and the project's rate is 23976 the clip can't be exported then they start to get all nervous and they're like okay well I guess we can't do this but you know what let's hold on for a second here okay let's backtrack for a second because what's important to keep in mind and this is something that I always tell people when you're working in Media Composer and you're setting your project up you're not setting your project up for how you're going to be working. I mean, technically you are, but what you need to keep in the back of your head when you're setting your project is not how am I going to be working, but what resolution do I want to finish in? Because what's going to happen when you set your project up is Media Composer is essentially going to lock you to that frame rate. It's obviously going to give you flexibility when switching project sizes to do things like importing and stuff like that. But basically at the end of the day, it's locking you to that frame rate. And in this case, because I happen to be Let's actually just say OK here so I can call it my format tab here. Because I happen to be in a 1080p 23976 project, that is the type of file that I'm going to be exporting. OK, so if I was to take this clip and let's just edit it into a timeline. Of course, as soon as I drop this into a timeline, it's now in a 1080p 23976 timeline and let's export it again. Most people think, OK, no problem. It's going to export. No problem. So we'll just send it back to the desktop. I'm just going to say save. And again, I suddenly get this message. And I wish it was just as easy as when I click export, I didn't get any error messages. I didn't get any new windows that I don't know what they mean. I was just able to export this. Well, let's get in and let's see exactly what is going on here in the current export setting that I have set up. Okay. So in my export setting, and believe it or not, I don't need to constantly be right clicking and going to export and coming into options to see the export setting. All I really need to do here, I'm just going to cancel this again, is let's come back to my settings. I can just come down to that export setting and simply double click on it, and now it's going to present itself to me. Okay? So the first thing that's going on right now is that I know that I'm going to be exporting a QuickTime file, but here's where things have fallen off the rails a little bit. I'm wanting to export the file same as source. What that basically means is, is that Media Composer is going to look at the resolution of this file, which in most cases, if you've consolidated or transcoded, should be the same resolution and codec as the as the project type that I'm working in. So this should work. The problem is, is that this clip was transcoded in a larger than HD project. So technically I can't output it same as source because same as source would be 1080p 23976. So my first thought should be in a situation like this is that I immediately I'm going to need to retranscode the file when I export it or basically make a new uh, a new type of QuickTime file when I export it. Now let's backtrack for a second. Why don't we start with the most ideal of situations? Okay, so here's the most ideal situation. You've imported or transcoded everything or even captured everything into the same project type. You know that every clip that's in your timeline has been transcoded to DNX 175 and everything should be good to go and export the way that it is. So what I've done is I've actually created a clip that is exactly like that. What I'm going to do is just delete this sequence here. Okay. And I'm going to make a new sequence. Now again, like I said, we're assuming with this clip that everything has been digitized, imported, or transcoded into this 1080p 23976 DNX 175 codec. Okay. So what should happen when I create my first export preset is we're going to create exactly what we just had called a same as source export. So what I'm going to tell Media Composer is take this clip, export it using the exact same settings as the clip and as the timeline that the clip is in. So what we're going to do, simply right click, we're going to say export. Let's just create a new export setting, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come into options. We're going to have it same as source. We can use the Avid Codex. We're going to export video and audio, even though I don't have audio. In this case, the video format is 601709 because that's how the clip was imported. The native dimensions of the clip will be HD, square pixel, so keep that in mind. For the audio format, the audio format is stereo. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that if you had a multi-track, let's say you had 5.1 and stereo, so you had left, right, center, sub, left surround, right surround on channels 1 through 6, and you had audio on 7 and 8, you could actually do a direct output, assuming you're doing a quick export or a same as source export, and actually have all eight of those audio channels exported with the QuickTime file. So keep that in the back of your head. But in this case, I'm just going to export as stereo. Otherwise, I should basically be ready to say save as. We're going to call this QT, same as source. Okay. And I'm simply going to say OK. Now, what's going to happen is I'm just going to cancel out. You're going to notice now that over here in my export settings, I now have an export setting called appropriately enough QT, same as source. What we're going to do 
is just delete that other export preset. Because like I said, if this is your workflow and this is always how you're working, like I said, digitizing, importing, and transcoding to that project type that you're working on, all you should have to do with your QuickTime Same as Source Export is simply right click, say export, we'll send this to the desktop. I'll just call it QT Same as Source here. And what's gonna happen is, lightning quick, this file is gonna be exported to the desktop. Now, if I hide Media Composer here for a second, I come to the clip, I'm just gonna open it with QuickTime 7 here, just because not the biggest fan of QuickTime 10. You'll see that I can drag through. I could even play this if I wanted to. Remember, there's no audio with this clip. And of course, I could come up to my window, I could say Show Movie Inspector, and you'll see that this clip has been exported with the DNX HD codec 1920x1080 16-bit integer stereo left and right 48 kilohertz at 2398 frames per second, exactly the way that I had it inside of my Media Composer timeline. And you saw how lightning quick this file was as well. Now, something that's very important to keep in mind, and I should mention this right off the bat, if you were to take this file and you were to export it for a client, and you were to send them the file, you need to make sure that that client has the Avid Codex installed on their computer, the Avid QuickTime uh, components on their computer, which are available for a free download from Avid's website. Make sure they have that on their computer so that they can watch these files when you send it to them. Okay, so let me just close this file and let's get back into Media Composer. Okay, now let's talk about another situation that I see that editors get into all of the time. Now, the example that I'm going to use is ProRes, but obviously you could transfer this to something like H.264 or any other type of codec. Now, I'm going to use ProRes because I happen to be working on a Mac, but obviously keep in mind for my Windows friends, you cannot export using the ProRes codec on a Windows machine. Okay, so here's the situation. The you know editor has their timeline done. What they're gonna do is they're gonna take this file, they're gonna export it as a QuickTime same as source fast export onto their desktop, then they're gonna take it into another program and they're gonna make a ProRes file out of it. Well, we do have the ability to export right to a file like ProRes, and like again, like I said, I am on a Mac, so we're gonna use this as an example. We have the ability to export as a ProRes right from the Media Composer timeline, but this is where just having a little bit of thought being put into it beforehand is gonna make your job a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this clip, even though it is a DNX HD clip in my timeline, as a ProRes file for again, you know, we could send this to really any computer, Mac or PC, because ProRes is a you know commonly requested type of file. So let's do that and let's set up an export preset in the process. What we're gonna do again is we're gonna right click and we're gonna say export. What we're gonna do is we're going to go to the desktop again, but what we're gonna do is set up a new preset before we do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back into options. Now this time, instead of using a same as source export, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a custom export. Now what's important to keep in mind is that as soon as I activate the custom export, we're only gonna be able to export the stereo audio with this file. Now if you wanted to still export all of the channels together, what I would suggest doing, so for example, again, if you had eight channels of audio, what I would suggest doing is exporting as a DNX file and then again, going to another application like, you know, Sorensen Squeeze or, you know, you can even do it with Compressor uh, on a Mac to uh, reprocess the file as a ProRes file, keeping all of those eight channels intact, okay? But again, like I said, we're just gonna assume for argument's sake that our show's done, we only have two channels of audio that we wanna export, but we wanna export as a ProRes file. So we need to get in and be very specific with Media Composer how we wanna export these channels. Now, something I should also point out, at the top of the export window, you're gonna notice that we have a couple of options, one being use marks and the other being use enabled tracks. Now, what do those mean? Well, use marks means obviously use in and out points. Use enabled tracks means use whatever tracks I have selected down here in choosing what tracks we're going to export. Now what I should make sure of here, and let's just cancel out here for one second, is that in here I wanna make sure that I'm using the marks and I'm using the enabled tracks. So again, I'm gonna right click, say export, okay? And let's set up this ProRes export. Now what's also important to keep in mind is that these presets will vary slightly depending on the type of file you're exporting. I'm exporting a progressive file, 23,976 frames per second, but obviously if I was exporting an interlaced file, there are a couple slight modifications I have to make that I can even show you when we're going to export this ProRes file, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to options again. I'm gonna come to custom. We're gonna leave it as video and audio. You'll see the width and height. We can get in and change to whatever we want. Now, 
I'm going to get a little bit more into this a little bit later on in part two of the lesson. But for right now, the only thing that we need to know is that the width and height are obviously going to stay the same as the current project, which is 1920 by 1080. Again, we're going to export a 601709. We're going to leave the native dimensions the same. The audio format is going to be stereo again. But what we need to do now is we need to come to our format options. Now, inside of our format options, this is where we have the ability to get in and really set up this file to export as any codec I happen to have installed on my machine. You'll see that I even have GoPro Cineform, I've got DVC Pro. Most importantly for us right now is I have the Apple ProRes codecs located right here. Now for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to export ProRes 422. I'm going to leave the frame rate as current. You'll see the gamma correction set to automatic. Now if I was exporting an interlace file, I would want to make sure that I tell the compression settings that it's interlaced and whether it's top field or bottom field. Of course, because we're talking about HD, it would be top field first. But because we're only dealing with progressive now, I'm simply going to deselect that. We're going to say OK. Let's come into our sound settings here. I'm going to leave the audio in this case as 48. We'll just leave it as normal and 16-bit sample size. I'm simply going to say OK. We can leave the prepare for internet streaming on, which is fine. I'm simply going to say OK. And now what we want to do is do a save as, and I'm going to call this ProRes, okay? And what I'll do is I'll actually call it ProRes HD. Now, why am I calling it ProRes HD? Because you remember back here in the video format, we have this set up to be 1920 by 1080. All I have to do now is simply say save. I'm going to be asked where I want to save this file to. What we're going to do is simply call this ProRes. I'm simply going to say save, and this file is now going to be exported as a ProRes file. And you see it's obviously taking longer because it's recompressing the file as it exports it. And when we're done here, what we're now going to have on our desktop is essentially the exact same file. You'll see that I can actually now spacebar that to open it uh, inside the Mac preview. What I'm going to do is just simply say open with. I'm going to come down to QuickTime Player. Again, there's my basketball. I can simply come up to Window, come down to Show Movie Inspector. And you'll see now 2398 ProRes 422. I can now simply hit play. And there's the clip in QuickTime all ready to go. Okay, so I think that's a good place to pause our first lesson in our look at exporting. Now, in our second lesson, we're going to wrap our head around going from an HD project to an SD export. And I'm going to talk about exporting larger than HD projects and how it might not be as complicated as you think. Now with the new 8.3.1 update to Media Composer, it's actually a lot easier. And you can now get in and export these projects to work with in applications like Adobe's After Effects very quickly and very easily. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, And don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.